Hey, what's up, YouTube? My name is Matt Modai. I'm a content producer and betting analyst for oddsjam.com. My goal essentially is to make you guys watching this video profitable and knowledge knowledgeable sports bettors. That's essentially my job here at oddsjam. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing, you see it right on the screen here, sports betting for dummies. It's going to be a very beginner, very educational level, basically course on sports betting for those of you who are first starting out. So that's why the sports betting for dummies won't get into anything super complicated or anything like that. Just going to be talking about the basic level concepts when it comes to sports betting. How do odds work? Why are odds different across sports books? Why do odds change? What do the different promotions and bonuses mean? And then different sports betting strategies to help, <clears throat> excuse me, to help you be profitable. Arbitrage, middle betting, positive expected value betting. And that one's definitely the most complicated, but also the most profitable. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. The very first thing that you need to understand as a sports better, how do odds work? It's the most important thing. It's also the easiest thing, but it's very important. Here's what you need to know. When you're looking at a play, the plus signifies an underdog, the minus signifies favorite. So as we can see on the screen here, we see the minus six and a half next to the Eagles. That means they are six and a half point favorites. We see the plus six and a half next to the Cowboys. That means they are six and a half point underdogs. This would be the point spread. So if the Eagles win by seven or more, you win this bet. The Cowboys either lose by six or fewer, or they win straight up. You win this bet. The next one over here, we see are like the plus 235 minus 190. Those are just telling you the money line odds. A money line bet is all you're doing, predicting a team to win straight up. So if the team wins, doesn't matter how much they win by, doesn't matter if it goes into overtime. If you're betting on a team's money line, all they have to do is win straight up. So the minus equals how much you have to risk in order to profit $100. So for the Eagles money line at minus 290, I would need to risk $290 in order to profit $100. So the higher the number is in terms of the favorite, that the heavier the favorite they are. So the higher the point spread is, same thing, the heavier the favorite they are. For a plus money, what plus means is how much you would profit if you risked $100. So if I risked $100 on the Cowboys and they won straight up, I would profit $235. So right off the bat, what we've learned here is that it's more profitable to bet on underdogs on average. Of course, there's a less chance of them winning, which is why they're underdogs in general. But if you can identify a couple different money line underdog teams that you think are going to win, you don't need to win 50% of those bets in order to be profitable. So over the long run, it's more valuable the higher the odds of the bets that you're winning. So why do odds change? It's a very good question. The goal of sports books, they want to have equal payout on each side. So if the Cowboys win, they want to pay 50% of the money to them and then 50% of the money they'll collect from the Eagles. They want a 50% payout on each way. So odds change when those numbers start to get a little bit skewed. So if, if more people are betting on the Cowboys at plus 235 or at plus six and a half, those odds are going to change and become more favorable for the Eagles so people even out those bets so sportsbooks can get a 50-50 change. Odds can also change based on new information. So an injury, weather, anything like that, any outside influence that impacts the game will also influence the odds. But one important thing to understand regarding odds is sportsbooks just want equal payout on each side. They want to pay 50% of the money one way, 50% on the other. So why do sportsbooks have different odds? We'll get into more specifics example of this, but you know, FanDuel has the Eagles at minus 290. Maybe DraftKings has them at minus 280, minus 275, whatever. The answer to this question is A, because of the answer to the first question. Why do odds change? Because sportsbooks want equal payout on each side. So sportsbooks are going to have different odds when they have different money coming in. So if a ton of people are betting the Cowboys on FanDuel and a bunch of people are betting the Eagles on DraftKings, those sportsbooks are going to have different odds. Each sports book has their own proprietary method of pricing odds in general, their own algorithm that they use to determine spreads and money lines and totals and stuff. But the main thing that changes odds is where the money goes. So if sports books are receiving money two different ways, Caesars receives it one way, that MGM receives it another, they're going to have different odds. The next thing that's very important for a new sports better to understand 
our sportsbook promotions slash bonuses. The most common one you'll see here, risk-free bet. It's pretty simple. All that means is you bet up to that amount, whatever number they're saying they'll give you. So you see right here with FanDuel, get a thousand dollar risk-free bet. If you don't win your first bet, basically means you can bet up to a thousand dollars. If that bet loses, you will get a free bet for that amount. So you bet $1,000 on the Eagles money line on FanDuel. The Eagles lose, the Eagles will give you $1,000 in free bets. That's how all these different sportsbook promotions work. You'll hear other promotions like Profit Boost and Odds Boost. All those are doing are boosting the odds. So if we go back to this example, if FanDuel is offering boosted odds on the Cowboys, they would say, yo, instead of plus 235, we'll give them to you for plus 250. We'll boost the odds. That's all that means. And the important thing to understand regarding sportsbook promotions, they're, they're not a scam. They're, ju they're just simply not. There's this general thought, this consensus, that whenever sportsbooks are offering a promotion or when they're boosting odds, they're trying to trick you. Basically, they're trying to bait you into taking a bet that they know is going to lose or the uh, promotion itself is a scam. And of course, reading the terms is very important, but sportsbooks aren't trying to trick you. What they're trying to do is get users on their platform. That is why they offer promotions and bonuses. There's so much competition to gather the user base that sportsbooks just want users, user product. FanDuel wants people to use FanDuel over DraftKings. DraftKings wants the opposite. They want people to use their own app. So sportsbooks offer these promotions to try and get users on their app. Once they have the user, then they can start making money off of them, but they first need to get the user. So I want to kind of dissuade the notion or the thought that these are all scams because they're not. They're just trying to get you to use their product. Um, the next thing to talk about, bankroll management. So you'll hear this a lot, your bankroll, whatever. Bankroll equals the amount of money that you are dedicating towards sports betting. So if I am dedicating $5,000 to my sportsbook accounts, my bankroll is going to be $5,000. In terms of coming up with what your bankroll should be, it has to be a number that you are comfortable losing. And it also has to be a number that you come to <clears throat> independently. Don't let people like myself tell you what your bankroll should be. Look at your finances. If you handle them by yourself or with the family or with a significant other, look at those finances together and come up with a number that has to be a number you are comfortable losing. Because with sports betting, it's always going to be a risk. So a couple terms that you'll hear in the sports betting landscape, one unit, all that equal, when you hear a unit, one unit equals 1% of your bankroll. So if you have a $1,000 bankroll, one unit's gonna be 10 bucks. That's pretty simple. So if someone's telling you to bet three units, they're just saying you should bet 3% of your bankroll. The more, the higher the units that someone is telling you to bet, the more confident they are in that play. But with that said, and this last one is very important, you should never bet above 5%, five units on one individual bet. That's just bankroll management best practices. So those are like the kind of, key topics when it comes to sports betting. Of course, there are more specific, more kind of nitty gritty stuff. So I would recommend going to oddsjam.com and just check out the resources tab. You can see everything, everything that you would ever want to learn about sports betting is on the oddsjam resources tab. We have, you know, what's a favorite? What's an underdog? What does sharp mean? Whatever. What's a free bet? How to best use a free bet? It's all on the oddsjam resources. And if you are a brand new beginner and you're just starting your sports betting journey, check out the getting started guide. It has everything you need to know, exactly what it sounds like, getting started. So the next thing that I want to talk about are, are sports betting strategies to help you make money betting on sports. These are sports agnostic. It doesn't matter. It's not a specific sports betting strategy, but they are helpful. Number one, line shop. This says be signed up everywhere. So I mentioned in the beginning, why do odds change? Why do sportsbook have different odds? Sportsbook promotions. If you sign up for every single sportsbook, you are giving yourself the highest percent chance of either winning a bet or B, maximizing your profit on bets that you do win. So what I have up on the screen here, the money line odds for a football game. We see that the Eagles money line ranges from minus 209 to minus 240. It's the same exact bet. Nothing is different about this bet. But if you place it at the minus 209, you have to risk $209 to win 100. If you place it at 240, you have to risk 31 more dollars. Same exact bet, either the Eagles are going to win or they're going to lose, but line shopping is maximizing the potential amount of money that you can win from sports betting. It's the same thing as when you're shopping, right? If Amazon is giving you a TV at 500 bucks, Best Buy is giving it to you at 750, you're going to go to Amazon. That's how that works. You're going to just, you're going to take the cheapest price. And it's the same thing with sports betting. 
So the situation also applies with point spreads, but instead of maximizing your potential profit, you're maximizing the win percentage of the bets themselves. So we see here point spread for the Ravens Giants game ranging from Ravens minus four and a half to Ravens minus five and a half. Same exact odds. You could get the Ravens minus five and a half at minus 110 odds on Bet Rivers. And you can also get the Ravens at minus five and a half, also at minus 110 odds. It's the same exact price. You're still risking $110 to profit 100, but you can get it at a full point lower if you want to back the Ravens. The Ravens win by exactly five, which is not out of the realm of possibility. That is a very normal score to win by in football. You would have lost this five and a half bet. You would have won this four and a half bet. Same, you're just, you're still betting on the Ravens. You're still paying $110 to win 100. But by line shopping for the best spread, you have literally made a difference of winning and losing a bet. So line shopping is the most important thing you can do. If you sign up for every sports book, not only are you maximizing the percent chance of getting the best odds, but you can also take it take advantage of all those sign-up bonuses and you just give yourself more sports books to compare to. So if one sports book like this minus 209 here, this minus 209 is a clear outlier. The closest other book is giving to you at minus 220. Every other book has it above this amount. This tells you that this minus 209 is a good price. Without even knowing anything about sports, you can just use the sports books against each other. So line shopping, very, very important. The next strategy that I want to talk about is um, arbitrage. Now, arbitrage, again, it's going to sound like a scam, but it's not. Arbitrage is literally risk-free money. There is no scenario in which you lose money when you are doing arbitrage betting. And here's how it works. So you know how odds work, right? For odd at plus 100, you risk 100 bucks to profit $100. Plus 109, you risk $100 to profit $109. So if you bet both sides of this, it's a shots on goal market in hockey. It's a three and a half number. He's either going to go over or under. There's no possible scenario in which he gets exactly three and a half shots on goal. He's either going to go over or under. So if you bet the over at plus 100, you will get a payout of $200, assuming that bet wins. If you bet the under, you risk $95.69 at plus 109 odds. You also get a payout of $200. So what you're essentially doing is you're risking $195.69 total because you're betting both sides and you are guaranteed to profit $4.31. So for those of you that have a little bit of a lower bankroll, arbitrage betting is a great way to um, build up your bankroll because there's no scenario in which you lose money. You're betting both sides but you're taking advantage of sportsbooks having mispriced odds to guarantee profit. It's another reason why being signed up for every sportsbook is very important because you're just maximizing the number of sportsbooks you have to find an arbitrage opportunity. Middle betting, mid, excuse me, middle betting is pretty similar. Uh, you're still betting both sides, but when you are middle betting, you could either win both sides or have one push and win another one. So with arbitrage, you're guaranteed to lose one side. With middle betting, you could either win both or only win one and have the other one push. So you're not losing any money with that one. And here's how it works. So it's a college football game. On one side, you're betting Kansas plus eight. The other side, you're betting Oklahoma minus seven and a half. So if Oklahoma wins by exactly eight, you would have won this bet, right? Because they would have covered the seven and a half points. This bet would have pushed. So if you land on exactly the number, you just get your money back. And in that case, you would have profited roughly $100. But let's say this scenario where you, you, you lose one and you win one. There's still no scenario in which you're losing money. You're still profiting roughly 0.5%. So obviously the, the payouts are lower if one side wins and one side loses, but you have the possibility of winning one side and having one side push so you don't lose any money on the other side. There's also middle examples where you could win both. So pretend this was eight and a half instead of eight. Oklahoma wins by exactly eight. This bet wins, this bet wins, you win both. So middle betting, you're, you're placing bets still on both sides in hopes that you can win either both of your bets or win one and have the other one push. But in the worst case scenario, if one wins and, one's and one loses, you're still profitable. Now the last one, positive expected value betting. Like I said, it's the most complicated. It's also the most profitable long-term. That's what that says. And the way positive expected value betting works so pretend you have a weighted coin that you know is weighted 55% towards heads. So you know, if you flip that coin 100 times, you know it's going to land on heads 55 times, you know it's going to land on tails 45 times. So there's still a 45% chance that 
your bet loses, but you're gonna bet heads every single time because you know that's the profitable bet. That's exactly how positive expected value betting works. So the way it works is Odds Jam has calculated what sports books are the sharpest, are the smartest at pricing odds, and that is viewed as the quote unquote true line. So that is your weighted coin, right? In this case, it says it right here. No, let me move my camera. It says, so do you see the thing that says no big odds? So the big is essentially the juice that sports books price odds. It's how they make their money. So if you look at the odds minus 110 each way, right? So when a sports book prices something at minus 110 odds each way, like if we go back to the um if we go back to this example, right? We see minus 110, minus 110. If I bet a hundred dollars on the Cowboys at minus 110 odds and they win. I only profit $90. If someone else bets $100 on the Eagles minus 110 and they lose, that person loses all $100. So the sports book makes that $10 difference. That's the VIG. That's the juice of how sports books make their money. So in order to get an accurate representation of how sports books price odds, it's very, very important to remove the VIG. This is essentially your weighted coin, like I mentioned earlier. So in this case, it's a football game, Cardinals versus Seahawks, it's telling you the market, it's telling you the bet under 53 and a half. The, the, the sharpest sports books in the world, the smartest at pricing odds, are telling you this should be priced at minus 143, but you can get it on another sports book at minus 135. So that gap is what has positive expected value. So positive expected value betting essentially is placing bets that you know have a higher percent chance of occurring than the reflected odds of the sports book. And that will be profitable in the long run. You do, excuse me, you have to accept some variance. An unfortunate reality of sports betting is you could have the most perfect bet and it could still lose based on bad luck, based on weird stuff happening. So with positive EV betting, you have to have a little bit of a, a thicker skin. You have to be able to accept some variance, some losses, because in this case, you're only betting one side, but you will win often enough to be profitable in the long run, which is why positive expected value betting is so valuable. And that's going to be it for this sports betting for dummies tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful. The last thing I'll say is just bet responsibly, understanding your bankroll management, right? Understanding your bankroll, what you can afford to spend towards sports betting, not risking more than 5% on one given bet. Very important, but that's it. So hopefully this beginner sports betting educational video was helpful. If it was, we'd appreciate it. If you could like the video, comment, let me know your feedback, what was good, what was bad. You can also hit me up on Twitter at Jedi Modi. You can email contact at oddsjam.com, but that's it. So again, I appreciate you guys betting, or excuse me, I appreciate you guys watching, and I am excited for you to start betting and have a good one.